And our final match of our look back at round 19 takes us to Duisburg, where Bayern Munich, after only seven seconds, almost got on the scoring sheet. Janka going straight through on Lithuanian goalkeeper Stauser for Duisburg. Duisburg, of course, in their traditional blue and white strip. Bayern Munich playing in red and dark blue. That's Friedhelm Funkel, the Duisburg coach, has done such a marvellous job with limited resources. Stauser organises his wall as Mario Barza, the controversial figure, takes the free kick, headed away by Stefan Emmerling. Matthias to Barza, flicks it on Karsten Janka, but only into the side netting. Bayern Munich, the league leaders, an eight-point lead they have. They registered a crucial victory over close rivals Leverkusen just before Christmas. Then Leverkusen went to Rostock and only drew. And that, of course, is the reason for the eight-point gap between those sides now. Mario Basler, watched by Erich Ribeck, the man in charge of the German national team. He came in for a lot of criticism after Germany's poor tour of Florida in the winter break. Duisburg almost penned inside their own half all the time. Bayern Munich, who have not lost here in eight visits. Surging forward, Janka holding off the challenge of Haito and deservedly putting the league leaders in front on 26 minutes with his seventh goal of the season. A burly 92 kilograms. It's Marcus Babel, Giovanni Elba, Stefan Effenberg, almost like on the training ground. But look at the way Janka holds off the challenge of Haito, shrugs him off and cracks the ball past the right hand of Stauser. No emotion on the face of national team coach Eric Ribeck, but it was a good strike. Great power by Janka. Bayern Munich, the side with the best attack, 43 goals, the best defence, only 13 conceded. Jens Jeremies coming through. And away from home, the best defence only conceded five goals in their eight games away from home. This is Jürgen Neun and significant, this scene, for the ineffectiveness of the Duisburg attack. That was Alexander Bulguera, who until a few weeks ago was in the Bayern Munich squad. His first game for Duisburg. Stefan Effenberg. Janka laying it back. Lota Mateus cracking one in. The Bayern fans appealing for a penalty. They reckon that Slobel Dan Komljenovic handled the ball, but in actual fact, Mateus' shot skidding off the back of Emmerling, and there was really nothing that Komljenovic could do to get out of the way of that. Marcus Babel, one of 18 internationals in the Bayern squad. They have strength in depth like you wouldn't believe. Janka, back heel for Effenberg at the end of the first half. A delightful goal for Bayern. 2-0. Effenberg's eighth of the season and Bayern's 45th. And it all looks so easy. The old warhorse Matthias to Jens Jeremies, the star of the Bayern side when it comes to work rate. And Effenberg shot deflected by Giovanni Elba. Would Staus have got to it had it not been deflected? Well, we'll never know. Certainly no question of handball because Elba was facing the wrong way. And there in the stands are the Kaiserslautern players. At the front of them, Otto Rehagel. His team play Borussia Mönchengladbach, just about uh, an hour's drive away from here tomorrow. 
in what is an important game for both sides. Gladbach firmly entrenched at the foot of the table and Kaiserslautern in third place. Mario Basler, controversially maybe, but he certainly can manage a smile, certainly with his side leading 2-0 at half-time. Into the second half, and Mehmet Scholl, who's been injured for most of the season, takes his place on the bench. Maybe soon we'll be seeing Mehmet Scholl back in action again. A chirpy little player. And this is Giovanni Elba. The second half. A repeat of the first. Bayern in the driving seat. Duisburg with their backs to the wall. 13th in the table. Duisburg only three points above a relegation spot. And certainly condemned to concede all three points to Bayern Munich. Mario Bars, a great run. So much criticism of his fitness. He's been spending a fortune on a private personal coach to get himself up to what he considers his match fitness and a smile on the face of Uli Hoeneß, the Bayern manager. He knows the trouble that Basler has had with his fitness and must surely appreciate Basler's attempts to solve the problem. Oliver Kahn sorting out his defence, but it rarely was troubled by Duisburg. Bayern looking so classy. And on this form, that championship, even though there are still 16 games to go, looking almost a certainty. Helmer making it 3-0. The Duisburg defence cutting a sorry figure. Thomas Helmer, probably his last season with Munich. It looks like uh, there's no place for him in the plans of Otmar Hitzfeld, the Munich coach. But nice for the veteran 33-year-old to get on the scoring sheet. But where, oh where, once again, was that Duisburg defence? Well, to Ray Hardl reckons he's seen enough. Old poker face, they call him. But one of Germany's greatest ever coaches. It seemed like uh, Bayern had scored again, but the referee disallowed the goal. Into the final minutes. Mario Basler indicating that uh, he'd like to be substituted. Torsten Fink coming on for Thomas Helmer. 3-0 to Bayern. The points in the pocket. Duisburg really not even a look-in in front of their own fans. Bit of a risky challenge there on Kahn by Anderson. Once again... The burly Bayern goalie coming off his line. And nothing serious, Khan soon back on his feet. Mario Basler finally leaves the field to be replaced by Alexander Zickler. In the dying seconds, a cheer for him from the Bayern fans. Duisburg will have a tough winter, staving off relegation on this form but rarely are they going to meet a side as skillful, as professional, as well-coordinated as Bayern. Elba putting the ball in the back of the net, but the flag up four offside. Lothar Matthäus, 37 years young, manages a smile. An emphatic victory for Bayern Munich. This was the final scene of the game. They stay proudly on top of the Bundesliga, beating Duisburg by three goals to nil, to the delight of manager Oli Hoeneß.